as I speak to you, the site plan is ready. The land has been plotted. It means that when somebody comes today, today, as I speak to you today, the person stands the chance of getting his or her land. Hey you guys, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins and you should subscribe to Echo Simpson's channel. Echo is a really cool brother and I'm gonna invite him to come on my channel. Thank you guys for checking me out. My name is Echo Simpson. Uh, this might be your first time you are watching my videos or you are the existing subscriber. I want to say thank you very much. But if you are new, make sure you subscribe because whatever we're going to talk about right now, whatever I have been publishing on YouTube is about bridging, you know, brothers from the diaspora to brothers and sisters from or in the motherland, right? So today I have here with me two wonderful guys you might have seen this dude obed almost all the time in my videos when it comes to the land the issue with the land in asebu and i have here with me another another father right i don't want to call him a brother he's a brother but i mean he, his his status right now he's a father to me and then maybe most of you all right so before this i've made certain videos about free land in asebu Pan African village by the people of Asebu and the chief of Asebu. Uh, we've made a couple of videos about the 10 things you need to provide in order to get this land, how much you're supposed to pay, what exactly you need to do to get this free land here in Asebu Central Region. So I've been doing my bit and you've been doing yours, sharing my videos, putting up the comments, asking questions, sending emails. Now we will talk about you sending emails and you're not getting replies because the, the the gurus are here to answer those questions so first of all i would like you to introduce yourself to my followers and then we take it from there greetings family my name is kwame abduni toto senior and i am california soul food kitchen born and raised in berkeley california lived in oakland the last 40 years just repatriated to ghana in 2017 i love being here i came to ghana because basically i was just sick and tired of being in the united states i was tired of burying children and watching all the violence and all the crime and and um i got fed up and disenchanted with the with the african-american community there and the plight of us as african people and so i came to ghana discovered that there was a lot of opportunity here a lot of work to be done here and I found a home here in Ghana, so I'm really happy to be involved in the Asebu Pan African Village Project. I'm the administrator. I'm the person that sends out the emails and invites people to apply for the land. I wrote the criteria and the citizenship requirements. And I'd love to answer any questions anybody has regarding it. I think it's a great opportunity for people to come, have an alternative to being in the U.S. Those of you who are there in the U.S., I apologize for what you have to go through there. I know you're not having a good time right now. I wish you all were here. All right, so our brother from the diaspora says he wishes that you guys are also here at the Borderland. Why, why do you think you, they must be here? What is so special with being, in, being on the motherland? My experience about being in Ghana is what I, what I learned about myself is that what we lost, the greatest thing we lost in being taken away from here was our own humanity. We were forced to live with inhumane people and we began to pick up inhumane practices. Just coming back to Ghana, learning about the culture, the tradition here um, has been such an eye opener for me. I can tell you that the people here are the most loving, most beautiful people I've ever encountered in the world. And I can't imagine being any place other than here right now. I think it's a place you really have to come to. I can't really put it into words, but I think the, the underlying thing that for me is humanity, the return to humanity all right return to humanity that is it exactly all right so <coughs> on my other hand i have obed he needs no introduction but obed i want you to introduce yourself to the new people who are going to be watching you today and then you tell us a little bit about what the whole pan asebu pan african village all about how did it start all right yeah thank you very much uh Carl simpson thank you very much you out there 
I think I still need to introduce myself because I've grown some beard. <laughs> <laughs> some other people cannot recall me yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to go. I want to look like Kwame, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you are aware, I am Obeda Kokwansa, uh, the Director of Operations for the Cebu Pan African Village Project. Um, the project, as you know, uh, was part of the initiatives marking the year of return, that is 400 years that the first ship uh, landed in the United States of America. So, uh, as part of the year of return, the Paramount Chief of Asebu. Uh, His Royal Majesty Dr. Nana Okitechia Menfi the Servant thought it wise to provide available land for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora uh, so that when they come it wouldn't be just like coming home without having anything called an asset. You need to own your own house so that when you even go back to the United States you have a reason to be back in Ghana because you have your family, you have your house and everything here. So uh, we started in 2000 2019 it hasn't been an easy journey. Mm -hmm. Kwame, a committed member of the committee, our administrator, you know, yeah, 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 he's, he's played a very key role from documentation so far and by the grace of God we've gotten to the stage that okay. we have uh, all this while waited to get there. So by the grace of God we've gotten to where we wish to get there. The next stage uh, is to see the buildings yeah. erected <laughs> and I mean, we'll be fully uh, satisfied. Okay. So there's a letter that I have to say as far as I say with Pan African Village project is concerned. All Thank right, you. all right, all right. So I mean you've been hearing about this conversation for the since 2019 when the president and then um, the paramount chief of Asebu traditional area made it known to the world that yo Af Africans in diaspora sorry you are invited yeah. to Ghana. All right. So there was there was let me let me come to you there was a criteria that one had to go through in order to get this land can you go over the criteria is very simple but it is a little bit complicated at the same time and the reason being is because the returning to the motherland for africans from the diaspora whose ancestors were taken away in chains and enslaved is a very emotional a very sensitive thing it's a healing really that happens when you come to the motherland, especially for the first time. And so we really wanted to respect the healing process for people who return to Cebu Pan-African Village. And so the first criteria is that the people that come to the village are Africans, people of African descent. And so we really want to be sensitive to that healing process and allow people who have feelings of pain, of hurt, of anger, to process their, feet, process their feelings in an environment that is conducive to healing. So being of African descent is the first criteria. The second one basically is that you come and respect the people of a Cebu in the village of a Cebu. We don't want people to come here that are gonna separate themselves and feel somehow that they have some kind of superiority over the village people who may not have the financial resources that those of us who travel the world do. It uh, takes a certain amount of resources to come to Mother Africa. And so we want people to come here with some type, with, with a degree of humility and a degree of love for the community and respect for the people in the village. We want people to come here um, willing to learn the local language and to communicate and to try to assimilate into the village because in order to live here, you're gonna have to learn how to communicate with people. So these are some simple requirements. We want people to come here and take advantage of the opportunity by developing the land that they acquire. We're really not interested in people who just want to get some land to go back and say, I have land in Ghana, never come to the land, never develop the land. The whole purpose of this, of this whole project is to allow people who want to return to Ghana to come back and have a stake in Ghana. This, this chief, and I want to give a special thanks to Okatechi. Nana Okatechi of Memphis the Seven for even making this possible. His gesture of generosity, I think, is tremendous. And so we want people to respect that when they come here. You kids can't come here and not really appreciate the magnitude of a gift of free land. And so those are the basic requirements. Then we have some things we expect people to do. We expect you to develop your land in a timely manner. Now we know some people can't develop and build as fast as others. No one's gonna make you do things in a certain time frame. But we'd like for you to at least 
fence your land off and keep your land clear so that your neighbors won't be living next to a blighted property. We'd like for you to make sure that you come and offer a token of gratitude to the chief. That's part of our culture as African people. We respect the chieftaincy and, and the governance. That's our governance system. We want people to come here and be a part of that. So we expect you to come. We bring the chief a nice offering of drink. We give him a nice financial uh, offering. We come, we humble ourselves, we respect the chief in the process. That's all part of learning the cultural process of Ghana. So the criteria is not really extensive. It's 10 points, but it's really about respecting the culture of Ghana, respecting the people that are here, and respecting the healing process of Africans from the diaspora who are returning to Ghana. All right, so thank you very much for that explanation. All right, so if you're watching this, I'll put up a link uh you know down there and then you can follow up and see because i made a video on that mm -hmm. so they will go there read i mean watch again and all that now let's come to obed obed um there is an amount that one has to pay which is i know it's seven hundred dollars what really goes into that seven hundred dollars why should people pay if they say it is free okay as i speak to you the site plan is ready. The land has been plotted. When I say the land has been plotted, I mean the land has been divided into plots. The land has been divided into plots. It means that when somebody comes today, today, as I speak to you today, the person stands the chance of getting his or her land. Earlier, we told you we were not going to collect any money from anybody until the whole process is over. And I speak to you, the site plan has been processed. The land has been broken or divided into plots. So, if you come today, you stand a chance of getting your plot. You know, we wanted to put the right things in place. I keep saying, the chief, Nana Dr. Okotechi Amenfi, the servant, he's a college professor. He's a well-respectable man. He didn't want to do anything that would dent his image. So we wanted to put everything in place before we move on with uh, sharing of the land. Now straight away to your question, why $700? Uh, I think anytime we have this video, we take opportunity to explain. The land, as you are aware, it took the chief huge sums of dollars to get the plot designed, as in to get a site plan completed. Aside that, individuals are going to be given allocation papers in ghana when we talk about allocation paper it is a document that is given you signed directly by the chief this shows that the land belongs to the chief and the land has trans the chief has transferred part or bit of the land to you it could be one plot it could be two plots it could be an acre depending on what you want so when you get your land, you'll be given an allocation paper that is signed by the chief with the official stamp of the traditional council. This tells you that the land now belongs to you. You are now the owner of the land. The chief has transferred the land to you. That is the first document that you get, allocation paper. After the allocation paper, we are going to give you what we call an indenture. You get it? When we give you an indenture, the indenture simply explains that these are the documents, the records from the Lands Commission of Ghana. And when you come to Ghana, the Lands Commission is the agency that is in charge in regulating policies that has to do with lands. So it is a document that will be ascertained from the Lands Commission to show that the land that the chief has given you does not belong to another person. You get it. Now, what we are saying is that um, when everybody pays on the instant, as in when you bring your payment slip to show proof of payment, you get your allocation paper. Then when we get about 10 to 15 people, we process your indenture for you. The reason why we're looking at 10 to 15 people is the fact that when you take just one document to the Lands Commission, it takes a very long time. But when we put 10 to 15 people together, the agency of processing it becomes very high. So when you pay, 
you get your allocation paper from the chief indicating that the chief has transferred the land to you the chief has given his land to you you are now the rightful owner of the land then the next thing is proof of document called an indenture from the lands commission to show that the land that has been given to you by the chief does not belong to another person I hope I've made myself clear. So these are the two key things that we're going to give you. And these things come with cost. It comes with cost. You know, the site plan alone, my brother, it's dollars. It's, 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 it's very huge. You get it? We're going to give you allocation paper. We're going to give you indenture. It comes with cost. So though the chief is giving the land to you free of charge, you're just paying this amount for the administrative cost. You get it. You paying this amount for the administrative cost. That's the need for the seven hundred dollars. And please bear in mind, seven hundred dollars is for eighty by eighty size of land. Okay. Let's keep this very well. Okay. The seven dollars is for eighty by eighty size of land. Of course, if you want to make an arrangement, if you want to get hundred by hundred, mm -hmm. if you want to get eighty by hundred, the chief has special package for you. Okay. But all this while we talk about. Uh, seven hundred dollars that is for the 80 by 80. 80. if you want to get 100 by 100 it's increases 80. but with all this what i've been speaking about seven hundred dollars and that is for the 80 by 80. all right thank you okay okay yeah i can see we are having um, a nice conversation in here <laughs> yes i mean he's been clear with the process what one has to do and then what one is not supposed to do